Yashar Jasher 63. And in the 93rd year died Levi, the son of Yaakov, in Mitzrayim. And Levi was a hundred and thirty-seven years old when he died, and they put him into a coffin, and he was given into the hands of his children. And it came to pass, after the death of Levi, when all Mitzrayim saw that the sons of Yaakov, the brethren of Yosef, were dead, all the Mitzrim began to afflict the children of Yaakov and to embitter their lives from that day unto the day of their going forth from Mitzrayim. And they took from their hands all the vineyards and fields which Yosef had given unto them and all the elegant houses in which the people of Yashara'el lived, and all the fat of Mitzrayim. The Mitzrim took all from the sons of Yaakov in those days. And the hand of all Mitzrayim became more grievous in those days against the children of Yashara'el. And the Mitzrim injured Yashara'el until the children of Yashara'el were wearied of their lives on account of the Mitzrim. And it came to pass in those days, in the hundred and second year of Yashara'el's going down to Mitzrayim, that Pharaoh, king of Mitzrayim, died, and Melal, his son, reigned in his stead, and all the mighty men of Mitzrayim, and all that generation which knew Yosef, and his brethren, died in those days. And another generation rose up in their stead, which had not known the sons of Yaakov, and all the good which they had done to them, and all their might in Mitzrayim. Therefore, all Mitzrayim began from that day forth to embitter the lives of the sons of Yaakov and to afflict them with all manner of hard labor because they had not known their ancestors who had delivered them in the days of the famine. And this was also from Yahuwah for the children of Yashara'el to benefit them in their latter days, in order that all the children of Yashara'el might know Yahuwah Elohehem. And in order to know the signs and mighty wonders which Yahuwah would do in Mitzrayim on account of his people, Yashara'el, in order that the children of Yashara'el might fear Yahuwah Elohim of their ancestors and walk in all his ways, they and their seed after them, all the days. Milol was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 94 years. And all Mitzrayim called his name Pharaoh, after the name of his father, as it was their custom to do to every king who reigned over them in Mitzrayim. At that time, all the troops of Angius, king of Africa, went forth to spread along the land of Kittim, as usual, for plunder. And Sappho, the son of Eliphaz, the son of Esau, heard their report, and he went forth to meet them with his army, and he fought them there in the road. And Sappho smote the troops of the king of Africa with the edge of the sword, and left none remaining of them, 
and not one, rather not even one, returned to his master in Africa. And Angius heard of this which Sappho, the son of Eliphaz, had done to all his troops, that he had destroyed them. And Angius assembled all his troops, all the men of the land of Africa, a people numerous, like the sand by the seashore. And Angius sent to Lucas, his brother, saying, Come to me with all your men and help me to smite Zepho and all the children of Katim, who have destroyed my men. And Lucas came with his whole army, a very great force, to assist Angius, his brother, to fight with Zepho and the children of Katim. And Sappho and the children of Katim heard this thing, and they were greatly afraid, and a great terror fell upon their hearts. And Sappho also sent a Sefer to the land of Edom, to Hadad, the son of Bidad, king of Edom, and to all the children of Esau, saying, I have heard that Angius, king of Africa, is coming to us with his brother for battle against us, and we are greatly afraid of him, for his army is very great, particularly as he comes against us with his brother and his army likewise. Now therefore, come you also up with me and help me, and we will fight together against Angius and his brother Lucas. And you will save us out of their hands. But if not, know ye that we shall all die. And the children of Esau sent a Sefer to the children of Ketim and to Sepho their king, saying, We cannot fight against Angius and his people, for a covenant of peace has been between us these many years. From the days of Bilah, the first king, and from the days of Yosef, the son of Yaakov, king of Mitzrayim, with whom we fought on the other side of the Yardan, when he buried his father. And when Sappho heard the words of his brethren, the children of Esau, he refrained from them. And Sappho was greatly afraid of Angius. And Angius and Lucas, his brother, arrayed all their forces, about 800,000 men, against the children of Katim. And all the children of Katim said unto Sappho, Pray for us to the Elohim of your ancestors. Perchance he may deliver us from the hand of Angius and his army. For we have heard that he is a great Elohim, and that he delivers all who trust in him. And Sappho heard their words, and Sappho sought Yahuwah, and he said, O Yahuwah Elohim of Avraham and Yitzchak, my ancestors, this day I know that you are the true Elohim, and all the Elohim of the nations are vain and useless. Remember now this day unto me your covenant with Avraham, our father, which our ancestor related unto us. And do graciously with me this day for the sake of Avraham and Yitzchak, our fathers, and save me and the children of Ketim from the hand of the king of Africa who comes against us for battle. And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Sappho, and he had regard for him on account of Avraham and Yitzchak. And Yahuwah delivered Sappho and the children of Ketim 
from the hand of Angius and his people. And Sappho fought Angius, king of Africa, and all his people on that day. And Yahuwah gave all the people of Angius into the hands of the children of Ketim. And the battle was severe upon Angius, and Sappho smote all the children of Angius and Lucas his brother with the edge of the sword. And there fell from them unto the evening of that day about four hundred thousand men. And when Angius saw that all his men perished, he sent a sefer to all the inhabitants of Africa to come to him, to assist him in the battle. And he wrote in the sefer, saying, All who are found in Africa, let them come unto me from ten years old and upward. Let them all come unto me. And behold, if he comes not, he shall die. And all that he has, with his whole household, the king will take. And all the rest of the inhabitants of Africa were terrified at the words of Angius. And there went out of the city about 300,000 men and boys from ten years upward, and they came to Angius. And at the end of ten days, Angius renewed the battle against Sepho and the children of Ketim. And the battle was very great and strong between them. And from the army of Angius and Lucas, Sepho went many of the wounded unto his land, rather sent many of the wounded unto his land, about two thousand men, and Sosiftar, the captain of the host of Angius, fell in that battle. And when Sosiftar had fallen, the African troops turned their backs to flee, and they fled. And Angius and Lucas, his brother, were with them. And Sappho and the children of Ketim pursued them, and they smote them still heavily on the road, about two hundred men, and they pursued Asdrubal, the son of Angius, who had fled with his father. And they smote twenty of his men in the road, and Asdrubal escaped from the children of Ketim, and, and they did not slay him. And Angius and Lucas his brother fled with the rest of their men, and they escaped and came into Africa with terror and consternation. And Angius feared all the days, lest Sepho, the son of Eliphaz, should go to war with him.